Okay, uh, so uh, welcome back uh, uh, to our course and today is the last lecture as I reminded you yesterday also and uh, as I told you once again I am repeating no interactive session this afternoon and Thursday afternoon instead for both D1 and D2 together we will have the interactive session at Thursday usual lecture time 11.35. Okay. So please do come with your questions that day. And uh, today also, maybe I'll finish a bit early, in which case we can discuss. I know that soon after uh, soon after our class, you have another class, so there's not so much time uh, to talk, but uh, still, if you finish early, uh, you have some time. Otherwise, you ask me your questions on Thursday, okay? So let me start uh, sharing the screen. And today is the last lecture of this course. I must uh, tell you that uh, though I have taught online uh, last semester and last to last semester, both those were uh, MSc electives, you know, postgraduate courses that were an elective course. So only some students take it. So the class strength was much, much smaller compared to this. And both those semesters went uh, quite well as far as teaching is concerned. But uh, when I was starting, I was a bit wary of, you know, uh, because of the class size, right? Undergrad class size is 1,400, two instructors, so 700 each. And uh, that's really a big number to manage. Uh, but, uh, but I must say that uh, it was wonderful, you know, absolutely no hiccups and absolutely no problems as far as I am concerned. And I hope it's the same for you also. I don't know. Okay. So anyway, uh, as I said, uh, we will do a few more examples and I will leave it, uh, leave a few more problems as exercises. And I will have one slide about the Delta function and uh, uh, that's all that we are going to do. Okay. So, uh, Yesterday, we did systems of differential equations. One example I did, or maybe I did two examples. And uh, you saw that, you know, the theory of Laplace transforms is so powerful that though we did not really deal with systems of equations, uh, systems of equations uh, beforehand, uh, Laplace transforms was so useful, so powerful that it could deal with systems also without uh, too much extra work. Okay, and uh, we saw DE in Laplace. What am I trying to say here? Can one of you tell me? What am I trying to summarize using this uh, phrase? Differentiation of Laplace is equal. Laplace, L of Y is the variable in a different Yeah, equation. so yesterday when we did one example, uh, we applied Laplace transforms and we got a differential equation in capital Y, right? If capital Y is the Laplace transform of small yes, y, uh, we got a differential equation capital Y which we had to solve and then solve for a small y. That's what I mean by DE in Laplace. We saw a beautiful example. So be comfortable with, you know, such things. So we will do some more examples today. And I'm calling something a thing of beauty. What do I have in mind here? I think I used the same phrase yesterday. What am I highlighting? Limit at infinity. Limit uh, can you just repeat? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I think two people spoke at the same time. I didn't hear. The One limiting of... condition. Yeah, limiting condition we use where? in solving a particular differential e equation. power s square by two right? yeah and in order to so that e power s square by two by s cube or something like that it came with a constant c right this constant came when we were solving the differential equation in laplace then naturally a constant came and we had no further information to evaluate that constant there were no initial conditions but it did not matter to us that is what i call a thing of beauty because Using the theory of Laplace transforms and using the limiting behavior of the Laplace transform, we could conclude that that constant has to be zero. Okay, so it was very beautiful. It was very useful in uh, solving that particular problem. So let's do a few more problems because there's nothing much, nothing more to cover. Whatever we have done till yesterday is uh, all. I don't want to do beta functions and extra things uh, today. So whatever, only recalling. 
so what is your idea in order to do this so y is a function of which variable can one of you just tell me let it be more interactive today we have time a. y is a variable a. of t and uh, what is given us some usual initial conditions right i lambda is a constant I. here lambda is a constant is there a question okay lambda is a constant and uh, what is your idea here what will you do apply a clap plus tan a clap plus tan so you know there are always two sentences which is there in our mind which we never say you know assume there is a solution which is piecewise continuous of exponential order and uh, that's all that you have done here right s square y minus s y minus s y of 0 1 y of 0 is 1 correct and uh, minus y prime 0 see this oh, okay okay this is not a standard initial value problem right you agree yes, yes sir. sir it is not because standard initial value problem at the same point y and y prime will be given here y prime is given at some other point doesn't matter for this question okay when we apply laplace transform so here i don't know what y prime 0 is so i substitute it as it is plus lambda square y and 1 by a square is laplace transform of t so this is fine and therefore i get y equal to something so this what i have done is s square plus lambda square y and the rest are taken to other side and i have divided by that so i got something i don't know what y prime 0 is what to do only y prime pi by lambda is given y prime 0 i don't know so i leave it as it is take inverse laplace take inverse laplace so this is uh, how do you do inverse laplace of this thing what the what, what strikes you first partial fraction no need of partial fractions for this no? double integral of 1 by yeah. s is differential yeah so you can 1 by s square plus lambda square tells you what will come in the answer Sin lambda, sine lambda t, sin lambda t, maybe divide by lambda. lambda. And by s will be integrating that answer, and by one more s will be integrating that answer once more. We have done this earlier, I think. And s by s square plus lambda square tells you cos of lambda. Cos lambda. And this tells you sin or cos. Sin. 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 So y prime zero is a constant. So this is sin. so that is it so this will be 1 by lambda square t minus sin lambda t by lambda hopefully i haven't made a mistake in integrating twice here this is cos lambda t and this is y prime 0 by lambda see these are the typical mistakes that students make in a hurry because lambda by s square plus lambda square is sin lambda t because there's no lambda here you have to divide by lambda and multiply by lambda okay silly things small small things but uh, easily one can make a mistake there okay so you got this And now what will you do? Can we derivative? Take derivative. Differentiate. So differentiate, and then so I have done it in one step. Plug in p equal to pi by lambda to pi by lambda to evaluate y prime zero. So you will get y prime zero equal to one plus two by lambda square. I'm skipping this step. You take differentiate derivative and apply pi by lambda is minus one. You will be able to evaluate y prime zero. You get some answer. One plus two by lambda. Lambda squared. Sorry. So therefore, you get uh, t by lambda square plus cos lambda t plus one by lambda sine lambda t minus one by lambda cube plus two by lambda cube. So that is plus one by lambda cube sine lambda t. So you get the answer. Okay. Here is another question, which I believe I have asked in one of the earlier times I taught. Okay, I think this was one of my exam questions. Uh, since we have time, why don't I give you two three minutes? Maybe that's not enough to do it, but uh, why don't I give you some time and uh, let's see whether uh, one of you can tell me the answers. It is post like an exam question, and suppose this is a surprise quiz. I mean, this is not okay. Don't get confused. I'm just saying. Suppose this was an exam and I give you this question. You have to give me a x, b x, and c x. Let's 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 take two minutes and see whether we can do two three minutes. Otherwise, it's coming in the slides. Okay, I hope you have pen and paper. So uh, please try. Sir, apart from the trivial solution, we need to give. Say that again. 
non trivial solutions we need to find the question is question is this satisfies a differential equation so you don't know what l inverse of this is but i am claiming that this satisfies this differential equation and uh, then what should be ax what should be bx what should be cx question is i mean all can be zero one solution but then uh, this will not satisfy that differential equation right okay are you saying zero equal to zero is satisfied by any function yes sir okay so non trivial in that way non backwards let us say yeah then i would not have asked that question no <laughs> see there is no trick okay there is you should not expect a trick like that in a maths course i mean especially in my course okay there is no trickery here uh, so even so this is a this is a warning for the real exam also since this question naturally came suppose in the real exam we don't mention you know non trivial etc later you cannot say and argue that look trivial is there of course you know that's not what we are asking it's a maths exam it's not about you know such uh, arguments so we will not uh, agree for such an argument it should be interpreted correctly and answered correctly okay so try if it takes too much time then we will uh, go through it uh, we will not spend so much time because i want to cover a little bit also more than uh, your answer which i know it will take time more than your answer i am interested in knowing how you are trying so there are two methods in the slides i would like to know you yours could be a third method i don't know once again you don't have to give me the correct answers so if anyone has the starting idea they can tell me and then we can continue how will you approach this, such a problem feel free sir can you give some time to try before giving it okay is that better then uh, okay so fine yeah let let's wait for two more minutes
shall we continue so one of you can uh, tell me how you tried no need to give me the final answer sir sir i kind of guess that it might be a cauchy either type of equation sir? okay yeah. so you're not using laplace transform theory no no I, i am but uh, okay like the guess because then we would have a do by do s of the laplace transform because when we have a t yeah. square and so on yeah, since you could and, make uh, one guess work maybe it was uh, it was fast i mean you could have done it faster maybe uh, did you get the answer no i am not yet i am oh, still doing it like fine. but you are also using some laplace transform right yeah, yeah. okay anyone else uh, uh, why don't some more people make some comments yeah uh, so we can square yeah. both sides so who is uh, speaking now pratik yeah yes sir uh, yeah, pratik, i am saying uh, we have to find a function y for which laplace transform is 1 upon 1 plus uh, s square yeah so we square both sides so laplace transform of y into ly is equal to laplace transform of sin x okay and then we can proceed by a convolution theorem okay and could you get the final answer no i am still doing you are still trying okay that looks like a good idea anyone else sir yeah who is this i found uh, a differential equation with l of y this is sai pavan yes sir okay tell me yeah i i know now l of y i know no 1 by root over 1 plus s square yes that you know yes i will form the differential equation with uh, l of y as variable yes and could you and finish the, the, could you finish that uh, way of thinking or you are still doing i'm trying it i didn't okay. work it out completely but it will work out right that that's exactly what i am going to do but that idea should work out right and before we solve like l of t y dash means we got in l of y whole power whole yes. that once there we to know yes like that we can go in reverse man correct 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 anyone else sir um, i tried by series expansion but uh, got stuck in between to the calculation expansion how did you try oh you are doing uh, 1 by root of 1 plus s square you expand and you apply l inverse term by term yeah Okay, that's something that I did not think of. It should also work. It should that's also. That's presented work. in three years. But uh, then you will only get what is L inverse of that, no? Yeah. You would have found out that thing by, but it may also be a complicated expression. We don't know. And uh, then, okay, you see which differential equation will be satisfied by that function. Yeah. Yeah, I will. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a roundabout argument. uh but uh, yeah that is a straightforward approach from first principles okay so try it later yeah if it works out very good okay anyone else so there is another idea that uh is chaveda yes is yeah yeah so if we look at uh, the laplace transform of f f prime and f double prime yeah uh, if you uh, see uh, the sum of laplace transforms of f and f double prime yeah it looks like uh, integral of the laplace transform of f prime yeah and uh, taking note of that and using the property that integral of laplace transform is laplace transform of uh, the function by t uh, right. using that uh, we can solve it yes so so uh, so to summarize i think uh, five or six of you have spoken and all of you have given different different ideas and i have the feeling that most of this should work because this is what i have been trying to tell you in last uh, four five lectures since we were discussing laplace transform that there is no one way because you would have seen that we have you know so many tricks in our uh, bag and uh, it's you know your ingenuity you may apply it in different different ways but final answer will be you know all of you will reach uh, the same destination you know same answer you will get so i think in my slides there are two methods so i did not even think of some of the methods that you suggested all of you you know since the method struck you uh you should uh, proceed in your own way and uh, see whether you are getting the answer if not why not okay so let's do uh, i think this is the way one of you suggested maybe sai pavan i forget uh this satisfies clearly a so capital y is 1 by root of 1 plus s square is the information given to you right l inverse of this is small y so l of y capital y is this now by differentiating clearly you can see that this satisfies this differential equation okay and therefore you can try the following 
you you know that y prime is coming you know that y is coming now how do you get y prime the way to get y prime is to take l of x y double prime you know that uh, this is correct no in order to get a y prime even from our previous example we know in order to get a de in laplace you have to multiply by an x somewhere okay so this is again you know your uh, familiarity your intuition and uh, so when you apply l of x y double prime you get this of course there's a little bit of cheating i know what to what to what is going to come therefore i tried exactly those so you if you did not know the answer it will require some trial and error to do this so l of y prime is this and l of x y is this l of x y is this is clear no this is one of our one of our formulas right because you are multiplying by x inside that is taking derivative outside with a minus sign so that's what we are doing here and what is the why is this true this is true because what is the argument for this there is a multiplication by x inside so that will take derivative outside of what of l of y double prime right and l of y double prime you have a formula it will be s square capital y minus something minus something and on that you should differentiate d by ds because of this multiplication by x so check all these things and you know that this is the final equation so there's only one way in which all this can be put together in order to get this and that will give you the answer so if you take x y double prime plus y prime plus x y from all these expressions you will see that when you do that you get exactly this so you get the differential equation so uh, worker coming back to you this is not cauchy euler right this is not cauchy euler sir i like the entire guess is in that it is entirely cauchy euler like you might be able to separate it as some amount of cauchy euler and some amount of linear oh, so fine, fine, fine. If we write the cauchy euler and we are able to equate it to some sort of linear uh, combination of the laplace transform then that i agree could apply but that is a bit long still yes yes that i agree but even here there's a little bit of cheating on my part right i knew the answer no so i took the correct terms and did this because otherwise you will have to make some trial and error you may have to put you know you would guess because of y prime coming here you will take something like this but maybe you don't know what constant will come so you may have to take you know you will you maybe you know from first principles when you try a little bit more of work is involved since i knew the answer i did the correct thing but point is there's no one method you have to you know it is your uh, it is your familiarity with these kind of things so anyway here is the answer okay here is another method you know that capital y is this that is our starting point anyway capital y is this and uh, therefore y prime is this yeah this is what we did last time also y prime satisfies a differential equation i'm not writing it like that i know that y prime is this and uh, this is the laplace transform of what this right and uh, the rightmost thing this is the laplace transform of where i am moving my cursor is the laplace transform of y y and this is the laplace transform of cos 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 t cos x t. therefore this product is a laplace transform of convolution is a helicopter going so i couldn't hear you uh yeah so the product is a laplace transform of if this is the laplace transform of y and if this is the laplace transform of cos x then this product is the laplace transform of what convolution of y and convolution of y and cos x so you know something right therefore l of x y is l of cos x star y why l of x y l of x y will be minus y prime right so this minus i have taken here so minus y prime is l of x y 
This is L of cos x star y. Therefore, by large, x y is cos x star y, which is integral zero to x cos x minus t by t dt. That's the definition of convolution, and uh, you can differentiate this twice in order to get this equation. Sir, yeah. Once you explain this method again, what I'm saying is you just computed y prime, so you got this. And this you understand is L of what? This also you understand L of what? And you know that the product of Laplace transform is the Laplace transform of convolution. Agree? So what you have got at this step, at this step, is that minus y prime is Laplace of cos x times Laplace of y. Why you don't know? Why you want to find out? Okay. But minus of y prime is L of x y, no? Minus of capital Y prime is L of x y, right? Agree? You had the formula, no? L of minus t f t is L of f prime, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is L of x y. Minus of y prime is L of x y, and then the right hand side is L of cos x star y convolution. Hmm. We don't know what y is. We are looking for a differential equation satisfied by y. So x y will be cos x star y because of lurch. And cos x star y is integral zero to x cos x minus t y t dt. So you differentiate a number of times and use differentiation under the integral sign, and uh, you have to differentiate twice, and then you will see that this y will satisfy this differential equation. You have to do that. Yes, this method to apply, we I mean. We need to know that that uh, this form should arise, or else it won't work, right? Say that again. For this method should apply, we need to able to write as a convolution. Well, I mean, in some other problem, there may be some other trick. I don't know. See, there's no theory here. This much we have proceeded just from scratch using you know one of one or the other of theorems that you know. Okay, so this much you have got. Why satisfies an integral equation of this type? an integral equation and differential equation you know from picard onwards are connected so you can differentiate and try to you know again you know there is some experience required it's not so obvious that differentiating twice you know you end up here you may have to multiply appropriately etc but you can do that so you will also use differentiation under the integral sign what one of you told me is called leibniz rule okay so anyway do more problems and uh, that's why i have uh, stated it here uh, this you would be using in this step when you are differentiating this you will be using differentiation under the integral sign okay so uh, i have left uh, these two problems as exercises uh, these are first order equations and uh, i don't remember the solutions but uh, try so one is y prime minus 2ty is 0 y of 0 is 1 and the other is y prime plus 2ty is 0 Y of zero is one, so you apply Laplace, and in involving T Y, so you know in Laplace also a derivative may come. Apply your formulas and see what you are getting. And finally, when you get substitute and see, you know whether it is actually satisfying this and this. Whenever you get the answer, you double check. Okay, let's do uh, this one. So what is given here? It is a differential equation here. t is assumed to be positive y of 0 is given which you will see is not being used at all okay some things are given but it will not be used at all as you will see it so happens that it will not be needed so what this k is it doesn't play a role but what is given us not small y at one what is given us capital y at one so i am cooking up you know new new problems it's not an ivp or anything because in ivp you know y of 0 and y prime at 0 same point would have been given And in an earlier problem, I gave y prime at some other point. Here, you know, I am not giving y prime. I am not giving small y prime. I am giving capital y. Okay, but all these can be used in order to do. So let's apply Laplace. So you get this. So what did I do here? L of y double prime and minus of d by ds for this part. And L of y prime is S L y minus y of zero. And L of y and minus of d by ds for multiplication by t. So you get this, and this is minus d by ds. So if you apply the formula of L of y double prime, and everything as it is, so do all that, and you will get this. You will get a differential equation in capital Y, and uh, 
this is a nice differential equation no is it a separable differential equation capital y it is separable right you agree yes sir you haven't forgotten no our uh, starting may beginning very very basic things see answer is full syllabus so you need to know the initial small small things also so this is separable so y prime by y is minus s by s square plus 1 so integrate so you will get log equal to minus half log s square plus 1 or something you will get this y is equal to c by root of s square plus 1 now what will you do what is the next step in order to evaluate can can you evaluate this constant c y of 1 equal to 1 by root 1 and therefore what is capital c 1 1 1 So you got the answer, right? You got y s equal to you got capital Y. Did you use this y of zero is k? No, because it got cancelled somehow. So that was not needed. Okay, so you got y of s is one by root of s square plus one. But uh, what should we do? We are interested in not this. No, we are not interested in this. We are interested in inverse. No, 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 no. The question was this only. Question was compute the Laplace transform of a solution of. So you, this is the answer. Agree? This is what is asked, right? So it's exactly the earlier question. You know, I made another, I phrased it in another way earlier. You know, I gave this one, and I asked you to find out the differential equation satisfied, and you solved it to be this x y double prime plus y prime plus x y. And this time, you know, I put the same question in the other way. Compute the Laplace transform of a solution of, because from this it's not so obvious what y is. No, so that's not what I am asking. I am asking only this much. Clear? No. So read the question carefully. Also, okay. Another lesson. The question is the plain English here is compute the Laplace transform of a solution. So what is asked is compute capital Y. So you have you are done. Okay. now you know in your tutorial problem you will see that some integral equations are also you know we are asking you to solve doesn't matter right laplace transform the theory does not see differential equation integral equation whatever you just apply laplace transform and see where it leads to so this is an integral equation in y the variable y apply laplace apply laplace you will get capital y equal to what will be the laplace of 1 Laplace one of by s. One by s. One by s plus Laplace of this whole thing. What will be that? Y capital y into two. Capital y into Laplace of cos t. Cos. Cos t. Cos t. So that will be capital y into s. S upon s square plus one. Y s square plus one. So there is a y here and y coming from that thing. Take it to one side. All that if you do, you will get capital y equal to this. What is your next step? You want to solve for small y. What is your next step? Inverse Laplace. Inverse Laplace. But what will you do in order to do inverse Laplace? What is the keyword? Partial fraction. Partial fraction. Do partial fraction. Can you tell me what is the answer? Partial fraction. One by one by s. One by s minus one by s square minus one by s plus one by s square minus one by s plus one plus by s. plus plus yeah plus one by s one by s plus one by s square minus s plus one right yes sir yeah so one by s what is the inverse Laplace transform one one, one. So you have to only find the inverse Laplace of one by s square minus s plus one. How will you do it? What is the key word? Completing the square. Completing the square. Minus s plus one will be s minus half whole square plus three by four. Three by four. How will you visualize three by four? Will you root, leave? root three by two. Three by two square. square. Root three by two whole square. And numerator is one. So there you have to put the root three by two. That means you have to multiply by two by root two. So what will be the answer? It will be sine or cos. Sine. Sine. And uh, you are doing it for s minus half. So how will you get the final answer? E raised to t e by two. E raised to t by two. Wonderful. Okay. So the answer is one plus two by root three e power half t sine root three by two t. So that is the solution of the integral equation. So once again, you know, the theory is uh, so powerful. Differential equations, systems of differential equation. 
not quite an ivp some other data is given integral equation we don't see you know it's a bulldozer it just go, goes and you know bulldozes whatever problem is there okay so one slide about dirac delta see you know i told you in one of the lectures actually i need not have done this but you know in one lecture i mentioned dirac delta saying that limiting behavior that is for a function and i and when i looked at my 2016 folder from which i was taking my lecture dirac delta was never mentioned so i believe you know i have taught it before 2016 also i think i have taught it in 2013 and uh, maybe so i did not check my 2013 folder but maybe you know so somehow i have this memory that i stress this point it's a function it's not you know dirac delta is not allowed etc so from that vague memory of 8 years ago only i would have mentioned that and then since yesterday some of you reminded me of that i have put it back here but uh, this is not really uh, in the syllabus so in particular i don't think uh, this will be done in d3 d4 because the last class was yesterday for d3 d4 okay but anyway you know forget syllabus and all no i don't like uh, so much uh, talking about syllabus exam and these kind of things of course those are important for you i understand but somehow my temperament is you know enjoy what we do okay so uh, anyway so here is a slide so dirac delta function is strictly speaking so this is not your usual dirac delta function it is shifted by a constant a so i will call this the dirac delta function concentrated at a this is outside syllabus i am telling you once again uh, out of pure interest we are doing this this is concentrated at a and you will know the non rigorous wrong definition right what is the wrong definition of this function first of all it's not a function but if we call it a function can one of you tell me the wrong definition infinity at a zero at a absolutely okay very useful definition but it's not quite correct because what is the meaning of infinity at a point but at a it is infinity everywhere else it is zero so a better way of defining it more rigorously is it is that function which satisfies this integral so if, if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity of any nice function nice means you know continuous and outside a bounded interval it is zero such a function is called compactly supported support is you know a bounded interval a closed bounded interval so if you integrate throughout minus infinity to infinity against any such function this is dirac delta function concentrated at a the answer should be f of a this is vaguely speaking what is happening if it is infinity at a and zero everywhere else it's focusing at a okay so you will get this should be true for every nice function f and such a delta is called the dirac delta function so nice means continuous and compactly supported compactly supported meaning outside a compact set meaning a close bounded set it is zero so let us use this notation delta at a is delta of x minus a shifted now let us do l of delta a we have a formula right what is the formula of laplace transform we will blindly apply that formula it is integral Tell me, zero to infinity. E power minus e power, power minus t delta a of t dt. Delta a is delta of t minus a. Can you tell me the next step, and then you are done? This is integral zero to infinity. E power minus integral, integral minus infinity to infinity of uh, th uh, the heavy side function times e power minus t. Absolutely. So just make the integral minus infinity to infinity, and just put the correct Heaviside function from zero onwards one, and uh, before zero it is zero, including zero zero onwards it is one. That is this function. So it is exactly this. But what is the definition of Dirac delta? Using the definition of Dirac delta, what is this integral? E by e power minus s e. S a zero of zero of a by definition. So this is the answer. Laplace transform of delta a is this function. So Laplace of delta involves heavy side and exponential. In particular, at a equal to zero, the usual delta function concentrated at zero. What is the answer? Plug in a equal to zero. What is the answer? One or zero? No, a equal to zero. You plug in. So what is u zero? U zero at zero is one. 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 E power minus zero times S S. 
one hmm. one so the answer is sir, uh, here a uh, nice means continuous and compactly supported but the continuous condition is actually violated ha huh. so, so you you are right you are right so what is our function our function is e power minus st times u0 t right that's our function no yes sir yeah so this is this is how it is defined agree yeah but you know in in a, in a sense we are going to use this and make use of that definition for more general functions so as i said you know dirac delta is not a function so theory has to be built rigorously there is a way of doing that and uh, if one of you know the keyword you can tell me this is completely outside our uh, topic but it's a very famous word maybe you know what is the mathematical theory which is it distribution yes it is called distribution uh, who's this can i know the name who mentioned distribution vakar vakar can you tell me vakar or anyone else uh, what extra you know about this word distribution like who invented uh, no invented or discovered or whatever theory of distributions Maybe it's a know. guess gauss no 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 that's uh, well very i'm very happy somebody said gauss gauss is so many years ago gauss is centuries ago right when did gauss live roughly 1600 1600 yeah 300 years ago i remember i think he died in 1855 or something he lived long uh, for that uh, generation gauss had a longish life compared to many other mathematicians who all died very young right uh, so gauss lived long and uh, gauss was in the 1800s so 1900s 2000 yeah so certainly 250 years ago but uh, the theory of distributions is uh, modern it's a 20th century theory so uh, or baki Bourbaki is a collection of mathematicians, not a mathematician. Of course, you will have Bourbaki texts about distribution theory, and I think the person who uh, discovered distributions is part of the cult, uh, not cult, the set Bourbaki, Laurent Schwartz, okay, French mathematician. But I must also tell you that this was the history of maths. Yeah. Tell you it's Laurent Schwartz, and maybe I'm I'm not sure about uh, you know not quite my area. So this is all from. reading wikipedia just out of interest at some point and lorand schwartz might have discovered the theory of distributions uh, please google and double check i could be wrong but maybe in the 1940s 1940s so it is a new theory but later it, uh, you know those days because world was not so connected one did not know of happenings in other parts of the world later it turned out that most of these ideas were already developed 10 years ago in 1930s by a russian mathematician called sobolev so it is uh, you know credit is given to both of them these days sobolev and lorand schwartz the ideas were there of course the theory you know in much greater detail is developed by uh, lorand schwartz anyway so uh, so your question is uh, well taken but there is a way to you know say that this is also correct okay though you caught me on the wrong foot here it is not continuous but there is a way to make sense and this is true so take it for granted assuming all the theory and at a equal to 0 the answer is 1 so in particular laplace transform of dirac delta concentrated at a equal to 0 is constant function 1 so the limiting behavior is what limit is going to infinity of constant function 1 is 1 but that's a remark this does not contradict whatever we said earlier because our earlier results were for a genuine function and dirac delta function is not a function it is the simplest example of what is called a distribution okay all this is outside syllabus okay maybe in 2013 it was part of syllabus but not in 2021 okay so it's not part of my syllabus uh okay so course is ending uh, very good dot on time we have exactly 5 minutes to narrate this story uh, so usually you know in all my real classes for every name that i take i would put a picture like if i mention gauss if i men mention lorand schwartz even outside syllabus i typically would put a picture and i will i will read the wikipedia article and i will take copy paste one paragraph that i like from wikipedia but this time you know online classes i had to cut out all my jokes except for one or two i did not crack any joke because part of the fun was fun of cracking a joke was to get the loud applause from the students which i was not getting right because all of you are muted so uh, 
therefore uh, you know there was no real fun in cracking a joke uh, apologies for that not apologies because you know some students did not like the jokes also in fact uh, uh, in one of the evaluations that i got some student actually wrote that he or she i don't know anonymous but uh, had to take a, uh, a pill for a headache because of my poor jokes anyway so but laplace is so important that you know i put something about laplace this is pierce simon laplace and this is laplace as you can see you know long old days right what kind of dressing uh, dresses and all and you know so uh, he's a very famous person you know even outside mathematics not just a mathematician okay so long ago even yeah roughly contemporary of gauss but a bit before gauss i think gauss died in 1850s if i'm not mistaken so i don't know how big the font is let me read it quickly uh, there's a longish article a wikipedia article about laplace so geometrician of the first rank what does that mean a very highly rated geomet geometer okay highly rated geometer laplace was not long in showing himself a worse than average administrator convoluted uh, uh, english sentences so what does this mean was not long in showing himself a worse than average administrator so this itself gives you the clue that he was not just a mathematician he had other jobs also in particular in the next line we will see that he was also a minister he was a minister in napoleon's cabinet you know napoleon right the famous uh, french ruler yes, and uh, he was also a minister for some time so what is the meaning of this sentence was not long in showing himself a worse than average administrator meaning as an administrator as a minister he was a failure and uh, this article says why he was a failure because uh, from his first actions in office in the ministry we recognized our mistake so this is quote quotation of napoleon in 1799 napoleon made these remarks i hope you can still hear me it's raining heavily now uh, so we recognized our mistake napoleon made him a minister and napoleon says that soon we recognized that making him a minister was our mistake why because laplace did not consider any question from the right angle what is the meaning of right angle it doesn't mean 90 degrees it means uh, it means looking from the correct perspective okay so laplace did not consider any question from the correct perspective what does that mean in order to solve an administrative problem you should look at it from that perspective right how to build consensus how to negotiate properly how to arrive at a solution which is you know which is okay with a majority of people he did not look at it like that instead like a mathematician he sought subtleties everywhere you know he was looking for nuances he was looking for subtleties he was being very rigorous and very logical and he was always asking what will be a sub problem so he conceived only of problems not of solutions like a mathematician would do you know he, like you know when i said continuous and compactly supported and when i mentioned dirac delta one of you asked but you know you can't do that so conceived only of problems and finally carry the spirit of infinitesimals do you know what is infinitesimal yes sir very very small yeah very very small in the limiting sense limiting behavior limit as something goes to zero okay so epsilon right the epsilon coming there so study of such small quantities so study of analysis study of limit so he carried the spirit of infinitesimals into administration as you can guess it will not be successful right so he was a miserable failure okay so i like this quotation and in my real classes i used to say so uh, i have exactly time is up but let me end by this thing do you know about mode indigo and tech fest and all those things in iit bombay yes sir yeah yes, sir. yes sir. and did you already have a virtual tech fest or something yes sir yes sir and uh, some of you might have uh, got the iit bombay spirit right most of many of the students are very very interested in being an organizer of some of these events in some capacity right is that correct did you already get that feeling though you have not come to the campus yes yeah and uh, you know i mean of course in first year they may not give you a good a good enough position but uh, you would still like to be part of it and i think even they look even at your cpi and all right it's very competitive right is that true no sir 
I think in order to get not in the first position, in the positions, I think there are a lot of applications, so it's a bit competitive. But uh, I end by end my one zero eight lectures typically by making this quotation and saying, you know, some of you may be very very good in doing Laplace transforms and you know doing convolution, doing all these things. Might ask the correct questions in mathematics, may get an AA or AP or whatever. But that doesn't mean you will be good in your Modi job. You know, in Modi, you know, you need to be a good administrator and a good, uh, you know, good organizer. So getting an AP in a math course, calculus or linear algebra or differential equations, it, it is of course very good. But uh, it could be a different talent that uh, is required in organizing tech test or Modi or whatever. And that we know again, you know, from Laplace, from from Laplace, as Napoleon pointed out. I'm 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 kidding. I'm just making a semi-serious but joke. And uh, let's stop there. And this is the last lecture of the course. And it was very nice teaching all of you. And as I said yesterday, uh, when you are on campus, hopefully one more semester is online. Of course, I think that's a decision which could have been conveyed to you by now. But after that, you are back on campus. Uh, come to my office, say hi, introduce yourself as saying, you know, I taught you 108 and uh, say hi. And uh, with that, uh, all the best for the exam and uh, all your other exams also. And uh, have a good uh, break after the exam. And uh, I will stop recording and uh, stop sharing the screen. Okay. Sir, I think you should stop sharing the screen. Say that again, bro. Sir, I think you should come back to the Zoom screen. I can't hear you. Oh, by the way, here is an idea. Uh, if you, I can see that some of you are on video. It's up to you, no compulsion. If people want to come on to the video, please come on. And recording is going on. So those of you who would like to be in the recorded video, come along now. And then I will stop the recording. For those of you who are a bit more shy, they can come on the video after that. OK? So. Uh, yeah, I can see uh, some of the some of the things that you are. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Very good. Very happy to see this. Okay, so can I uh, can I pin you one by one? Is it possible? So I'm not. Do I? Yeah. So let me see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, no. So my pinning, I don't know how it works. Uh, Okay, thanks so much. So, okay, so I can see that there are many, many people. So maybe, you know, pinning everybody will not work. Uh, add pin. Okay, so I can add pin. So this is working. Very good. By the way, I'm still on record. So this is going on YouTube. Okay, so be comfortable with that. Only then you should come. I am uh, stressing this. So, and, uh, okay, so. I guess, you know, this is a large class, so, and I'm doing it one by one. Is there a way to pin everybody together? Can one of you tech savvy person tell me? Chaining you to gallery, I guess. Is there a way to pin everybody together? Change mode to gallery mode. Yeah. Gallery mode. There, in the top right corner, there will be a view option, view. You change can change it to... You can get extra people. Like you can increase the number of people in the gallery. Yeah, but how do I do that? Uh, I go. To, I should go to participants or. Sir, top in the right top right, there is view written. Sir, they are select gallery. Yeah, I understand how bad I am at these things. Where should I go once again? One of you tell me. Top, top right, top right of view. I couldn't hear one of you. The top, top right. right corner. Right. View okay, oh, view, view. view. Gallery. Yes, gallery. Ah, very good. But even here, yeah, okay, so I can see that. Okay, very good. Now, what I will do is uh, this is the first page, so thanks so much. Uh, second page, thanks so much. Third page, thanks so much. Fourth page, yeah, so now maybe people are not on video. Good, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so as you can see, you know, uh, large numbers we are dealing with. Let me stop recording and others who would like to come to video after stopping recording, they are welcome after that. Okay. So let me stop recording. So recording is